Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rahag Yusalikin from Kula University, Bangladesh, and today I'll be presenting my work on network pharmacological mapping of potential anti-aging therapeutics in the human longevity interactome. Anti-aging drugs and senolytics are anything but a new concept in the field of biogerontology. They have been notably increased in numbers in the past few years. However, these studies are mostly limited to mice and other mortal organisms, and with no direct evidence of mechanism of action, these anti-aging therapies are mostly available in the form of nutraceuticals or repurposed supplements from other aging associated disorders such as cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes. The current study addresses this gap of knowledge by taking drug candidates that have significant in vivo evidence in model organisms to promote longevity and evaluate their potentials to transplant these activities into human systems. And here is a simplistic overview of our experimental procedure and the logic uh, points that dictate the approach. So we constructed an initial library of about 1,500 uh, potential anti-aging compounds. And from there, we screened for 285 uh, bioavailable and drug-like compounds that had high uh, GI absorption metrics, blood-brain barrier permeability, and uh, relatively high bioavailability parameters. We also looked for toxicity parameters, especially when uh, considering human oral intake, and from there we further uh, screened out potential toxic, carcinogenic, and uh, adverse compounds from the library, and shortlisted a total of 285 uh, compounds to be screened further. From these screen candidates, we went on to uh, investigate their statistical correlations with the uh, individual and class-wise uh, keg interaction networks. Uh, when looking at class-wise interaction networks, we have visualized the top 25 uh, compounds that are uh, correlated to the longevity regulating or aging associated pathways with disartinib, trigastatin A, uh, prunitine, PSR4, metformin, and so on were the best candidates. And as we can see, uh, cancers, uh, endocrine systems, cell growth, and nervous systems were the most significantly correlated uh, networks, uh, followed by signal transduction. When we further magnify these processes, we can see that these same compounds have varying interaction with individual pathways within these uh, keg uh, networks, particularly in case of uh, cellular processes and human diseases. We can see the most uh, significant interactions, particularly we can see that cancer-specific uh, pathways along with neurodegenerative and cell growth and death pathways are the most significantly correlated. And using these interaction patterns, we can visualize these uh, relationship in a correlation matrix and show the highest correlated uh, interaction networks with, uh, so, uh, with association to the longevity regulating or aging molecular network. In the subsequent step, we took these 25 uh, best candidate drugs and interrogated them against a set of known longevity regulating genes to construct a weighted shell distributed uh, complex network incorporating protein-protein and protein-drug interactions, uh, isolated the hub genes or the genes or nodes with the highest degree of connectivity, as well as looked at which pathways are significantly uh, enriched in these uh, networks where we found that pathways in cancer uh, and uh, specific signaling networks were the most functionally enriched in case of longevity regulating genes. In case of cellular senescence, similar uh, observations were made where hub genes were identified as well as the candidate drugs that interact with them significantly, uh, as well as similar functional enrichment for cellular senescence, uh, pathways in cancer, endocrine resistance, and developmental pathways were observed. And in case of dietary or caloric restriction nodes, uh, we also found that autophagy, longevity regulation, and certain signaling pathways were functionally enriched by our constructed networks as expected. We then went on to take th these three isolated networks and uh, extract the hub genes therewith to construct a new complex network incorporating all three uh, in their central degree of connectivity, where we found four distinct clusters of longevity regulating uh, drug 
compounds, first being the uh, longevity network uh, exclusive regulators, just butene and PC adenol. In case of the second cluster, we found drugs that interacted with the secondary networks and senescence, particularly hydralazine, ibuprofen, and celestrol. Then we had a class of omniregulated drugs, such as metformin, resveratrol, or quercetin, that interacted with all uh, hub genes in all three networks and of course we also had pseudo omni regulators that uh, did not interact with quite all of them but still had significant association with different uh, networks uh, embedded. Implications of this optimized clustered model can be seen when we parse the omni regulators and pseudo omni regulators in the uh, longevity regulating keg pathway particularly we can isolate the AMPK signaling uh, sub network here where we see resveratrol, EGCG, genistein, metformin, costin and basilin constructing a multilateral uh, interaction with uh, different genes in the node through a synergistic and combinatorial effect. We then evaluated the applicability of our optimized clustered model of 24 genes in different human tissue systems and as observed here from protein atlas data for these uh, gene expressions we can see that except for insulin all of these uh, genes have significant expression levels in different tissue systems uh, we can also observe particular uh, genes that are significantly expressed in blood plasma for readily available monitoring of drug and aging associated changes we can also uh, reflect these changes through subcellular localization of these genes where we can identify genes that are easy to monitor or easy to uh, collect from cell surface receptors or in the form of extracellular secretions. Uh, in case of drug mediated expressional changes we can also uh, identify resveratrol, quercetin and genistein to have similar expressional impact on these uh, gene candidates whereas metformin and EGCG have uh, another cluster of uh, expressional patterns. For a multilateral approach beyond human gene and drug interactions, we also uh, incorporated gut microbial uh, regulation in the study. And as we can see from this heat map, different drugs in our optimized model have different uh, regulatory patterns of uh, aging associated gut microbial species. Particularly, we can see that uh, when, we, when we isolate the most uh, significantly impacted or enriched bacterial species, we can see that resveratrol, taxifolin, caffeic acid, and celestrol have a similar expression profile that is almost the reverse of that of metformin, ibuprofen, and anoxacin, uh, particularly regarding uh, Firmicus bacteroides and proteobacterial abundances. Notably, bacteroides have been associated with better uh, healthy longevity metrics, whereas Firmicus and proteobacteria have been associated with both uh, retracted uh, uh, lifespans and health span in humans. We also looked at the interaction of these bacterial species uh, that are functionally enriched by uh, our candidate drugs onto longevity, senescence, and dietary restriction associated genes and again found different clustering or grouping of uh, potential interaction profiles whereas uh, firmicutes and uh, proteobacteria were more uh, active in longevity regressing genes or proteins actinobacteria and bacteroidids were active with the uh, longevity promoting genes such as SERP1, SERP3, and AMPK. So in summary, our work takes a set of longevity promoting drugs with evidence in uh, model organisms, human genes and human gene homologs of these uh, model organisms, as well as the gut microbial interactions associated with longevity and constructs a holistic network to ideally find hub genes regulating the aging interactive associated with therapeutic interventions for ranking of drug candidates for priority testing in human systems and trials for identification of pan tissue markers and serum available markers for monitoring of drug effects in aging and finally gut microbial regulation by drugs and subsequent effect on uh, gene networks associated with aging and their expression profiles. And if you're interested to learn more about the biology of aging and the application of computational biology, uh, the Human Aging Genomic, Genomic Resources is uh, an excellent place to start. We also highly recommend uh, works from the Partridge and Thornton group in modeling uh, 
aging networks and of course our own work that should be done with peer review and published in a few days and with that i thank you for your sincere attention and time okay thank you roger for this nice presentation thank you uh, Everyone, you can write your questions in the Q&A session or you can raise your hand and we can give permission to speak. We have one question right now. Okay, so there's a question in the chat, so I'll just go one by one. So the first question is, what is your strategy to validate your findings, experimental or computational? Okay, so primarily, we don't have any uh, laboratory data in large scale human trials like that. We have some uh, uh, well, how to say it, um, human cell cultures and stuff like that, some expressional data changes, but most of it is just animal model studies. So the first part would be to model what kind of genes or which genes, which pathways to actually, you know, go for investigational studies for. And that's kind of the purpose of the study to, uh, you know, show the direction that these are the genes, these are the pathways that we should be looking at. And then we move on to more experimental approaches uh, that can be, you know, it could be multi-omics approaches, it could be genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and so on. And the second part of your question is, where do you get the drug microbe associations? One data set, or is there a comprehensive database? Okay, so we used three different uh, database. Uh, if I can please uh, share my screen. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, okay. Uh, can you see this or see my slide? Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we first of all, we took the microbial abundance data from different data. Oh, sorry from different databases uh these are not aging exclusive databases they have uh, data for different diseases aging associated some are directly associated with uh, longevity some are associated with other age uh, aging associated disorders and we kind of uh, made a primary library of these bacterial species and then we kind of did a reverse engineering and took those bacterial species and looked at what kind of uh, metabolites they synthesize as well as which kind of genes they interact with. Uh, so the gene interaction is available in gut gene and the metabolites are uh, available in virtual metabolic human and human, I'm sorry, I forgot the abbreviation, but it's uh, HMDV. So we also put in some more updated uh, information from the latest literature uh, to you know, complement the data in the databases, uh, which are manually curated. So yeah, we went from there. I hope that answers it. Yeah, 